All right, guys, welcome back to Pi Game Basics. So we're gonna start off in this video uh, where we left off in the bouncing ball video. So definitely recommend watching that and getting this layout here. And what we're gonna do is now talk about some of the other shapes that we can draw with Pi Game. And let's go ahead and look at the documentation, actually. So pygame.draw. And with the documentation, we can kind of get a sense of what we can draw using Pi Game. So we have rect for rectangle, polygon for generic polygon. We've done circle, uh, ellipse, and arc, which is a part of a circle or an ellipse, um, and then lines, which we've done. Now let's remember where we were. If I go ahead and run this, we have a bouncing ball, and this is where we were. What I'm gonna try to do is now make some other objects that bounce. So let's go ahead and practice this. So I'm gonna create a new class. Like I said, I always like to make a class for every object that I have in Pygame. And I know for you guys who are really experienced in object-oriented programming, you're gonna be yelling at the screen saying that you shouldn't be copying, pasting these classes. And I know that, um, but we're gonna try to keep this tutorial friendly for beginners. And then later in, in this video, I think I'll kind of talk about how to use inheritance to make this look cleaner. So instead of ball, let's say square, I guess, or sure. And we'll put the Y value should stay the same, the velocity, sure, it'll start at the same. Really the only big difference here is gonna be where we draw this uh, object. So let's, or how we draw, not just where, but how we draw. So first things first, it's not a circle anymore. It's pi game, excuse me, pi game dot draw dot rect display. Then we have color, so I'll make the box, I guess, green RGB, so 225, 225. <laughs> I have trouble figuring out what colors I want to use. Uh, now we have to give it, so let's go back to the documentation because I'm starting to forget. Okay, so we give it our surface color, and then we have to give it a rect. Rect is going to be our position in XY, that's right, and dimensions. So X position, let's give it an X position. Let's see, well, we have to put the ball at 500. So we'll put this at like 250. And Y is gonna be self dot Y, right? Cause that's something that changes as the square bounces, which I don't think squares bounce, but that's okay. <laughs> and then we need to give it some dimensions. So let's do uh, width first. So width is 50 and then height of 50, I guess. That'll make it a square. Now, of course, we've created this class, and the next step, we want to make an instance of this class within the game function. And again, I go over this in more detail in the bouncing ball video. So I'll say square equals square, and then square dot move, and then square dot draw. That's not how you spell square, dot draw. <laughs> so let's go ahead and run this. So we have our bouncing objects, but it looks like the square is bouncing well beyond this line. And so let's try to understand what's going on. And if we look closely, and I'm just gonna restart this real quick. If you look closely, this square is bouncing whenever the top left hits the line, which is the behavior that we have given it because whenever we're drawing this object or even when we say self dot y is greater than or equal to 400 which is where the the ground is it's going to be the top left position so we want to change that a little bit i don't think we need to change how we draw it as long as we change when it bounces we want the ball to bounce a bit earlier so we want it to bounce at an earlier pixel amount and how much earlier in y well it'll be the height of the ball so if i go or i guess the box in this case so 50 is the height that we've given it. So now let's go ahead and run this. And now the box actually bounces where it should be. <laughs> let's try one more shape and then there'll be one more set of complications based off of that. So I'm gonna try to make a triangle. Now looking at here, which is all our shapes that we can make based on the documentation of Pygame, can we make a triangle? Well, actually we can. <laughs> a triangle is a polygon. So let's go ahead and click on polygon. Let's look at what we can do with the polygon. So surface, color again, and points. Now this is where it's important. Points are either a tuple or a list, a sequence of three or more. So we could just make three for a triangle. X, Y coordinates that make up the vertices of the polygon, the vertices of the triangle for our, for our, our case. So the form that we need to do this in is like this. So it's gonna be 
a list of tuples or a list of lists. So let's go ahead and try to implement this. So again, I'm gonna do the forbidden copy and paste and let's run triangle, try angle. Now self.y, so when we had the ball, self.y was the center of the ball. When we had the square, we showed that self.y is the top left position, so the top of the square. In regards to the triangle, so I guess it depends on what kind of triangle we're gonna make. So if we can make a triangle that corresponds to the x-axis on the bottom edge, then in that case, then the self.y will be the bottom of the triangle. And I think once we do it, this will make a little more sense. So all of that is okay. Then in that case, we want the bottom of the triangle to bounce whenever the ball or the triangle, excuse me, hits the, the line. So if that's the case, then we can get rid of the minus 50. So if I go ahead and run, well, now what do we need to change? We need to change the draw function. So I'll say pi game dot draw. It's not how you spell draw. <laughs> dot poly, I think. Draw polygon, polygon. So it's always good to keep referencing that documentation. So first one it wants is a surface, which is our display. Then it wants a color. Let's make it blue. So R, G, B. And then it wants their three points. So this is where it's gonna get a little interesting. So I'll make the list of lists. So first one I'll make as the bottom left point, which I want it at, what's a good X value? Let's say 700 and then self.y. So this is what I mean by the Y refers to the bottom two points. And then we'll make the next one at 750 self.y. So you can kind of see where this line is right now. It's, it's parallel to the X axis. And then our last point, we want to do it somewhere above. So I can say maybe in the middle in X, 725, and then self.y minus a certain height for this triangle. So I don't know, let's try 50. Let's go ahead and run this. Oh, you know what? We didn't add the triangle to the actual simulation. So to do that, we need to create an instance. Again, definitely review the bouncing ball video if you don't understand what we're doing here triangle we need to move it and then we need to and i don't know why i capitalized this and then we need to draw it and i like to keep these little spaces within the function i'm not sure if that's the uh pp8 rule book <laughs> on python uh but again this is for the sake of the, the tutorial i think it's a little more um, understandable as to what's going on so let's go ahead and run this and we have our bouncing shapes. Now you might be wondering why the square does not bounce in the same rhythm as the other objects. It comes down to the fact that their move is a little different, right? Because the square is going a little bit less far than the uh, ball or the triangle. And so we're gonna get a little bit of a different pacing between the bounces, but that's just the, the way the physics is. So that's okay. And you can kind of mess with the position definitions and, and all of that to make sure that they bounce the same if that's what you want. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna do is for your object-oriented people out there is we're gonna create a class called shape. And this is gonna be a generic class that's gonna inherit from the other classes. So if you don't understand inheritance, a lot of YouTube resources, and I think I'm gonna make a video on this eventually. Um, so you don't have to do this. This is okay to do it the way we did it before, but the proper programming way to doing this is creating base class that uses all of the information of each of these classes that are the same so that way you don't have to kind of re rewrite any of this stuff so what is the same between all of these well the init and really nothing else right because there's no the draw is definitely different um maybe the move is the same between the triangle and the ball so what we can actually do is do one of these put the move in the shape class, right? However, if I create a new, and I can get rid of these inits now, and get rid of this init. By the way, let's make all of these a subclass of the shape class by saying shape. And again, if this is not clear to you, you have to look up uh, object-oriented programming and inheritance in Python. Um, 
otherwise this is not going to make much sense to you, but if we have a subclass and we're rewriting the method from the original class, then we can do that by just rewriting the method. If we don't rewrite it, it's going to look up to the original class to, to use that method. So for ball, this one's okay. For a triangle, this one's okay. But for square, we changed it by adding the Okay, by adding the minus 500, so which is why we can't get rid of this, right? So let's go ahead and run this and make sure all of this still works and all of it still works fine. And this is a lot more compact of a code. 